or classified as a first felony offender offense aggravated rape sentencing date september 27 1999 sentence to a total of 50 years pro date august 1st 2021 good time may 12 2040 full term november 12 2047 is this information correct sir Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Marabello. Thank you very much, Mr. Mitchell. Uh, my name is Tony Marabello. Your case was assigned to me, so I will begin this interview. Can you hear me okay? So, can you hear me? Yeah. I'm having difficulty hearing you. Where is the microphone? Can you get closer to it? Okay, thank you. Mr. Mitchell, how old are you, sir? Uh, 69. I'm sorry? 69. 69. How long yeah. have you been in prison? Well, wait, I figure I've been in about, about 20 years. Okay. How far did you go in school? Did you get your GED? No, I went to the 10th. 10th grade? Did you yeah. ever try to get your GED? I tried once, but I, I never. You weren't it. able to do that? No. What kind of work did you do on the outside before you came to prison? Well, I used to haul puff wood. I used to haul hay, stuff like that. Okay. Good. I, in reading your report, you indicated that you had a drug and alcohol problem. You took drugs mostly and alcohol mostly every day. Is that fair to say? Yes, sir. Tell yes. me when you started using drugs. What age were you when you started using drugs? Well, I was young. I was, I, I, I was around 20 or 21, something like that. Okay. What drugs were you using? Like uh, weed, uh, pills, stuff like that. Okay. And how long did you use those drugs? Well, uh, I used them about two or three months. Well, when were I, you using drugs when you came to prison? When I came to, came to prison? No. Yes. So what about alcohol? Yeah, I used to be an alcoholic. Sure did. Okay. We well, say so you used to be an alcoholic. Yeah. What did you drink? Well, sometimes I drank beer. Sometimes I drank uh, Thunderbird, stuff like that. How often did you drink? Sometimes I drank every day. Okay. Now, these offenses occurred back in 1997, around about, okay? Yeah. What were you doing in terms of drugs and alcohol during that period of time? Did you drink every day? Well, sometimes I did. When I felt like it, I did. Yeah. Well, what does that mean when you felt like it? You know, like I didn't have nothing to do. Didn't have, you know, like nowhere to go and, and nothing to do. So when did. you didn't have anything to do, you drank? Yes, yeah, sir. What about drugs? Were you using drugs back then? Yes, yeah, I sure was. Okay, now, a minute ago, I asked you how long you did drugs. You said for a couple of months. So you did drugs and alcohol around the time all of this was going on. Is that fair to say? Yes, sir. Sure is. Now, I, wanted to, I want you to explain to me how it was that you ended up having sex with your two stepdaughters. How does that come about? Well, all I could, all I could think it just, it just happened. Well, just, tell me how it happened. You were 43 years old about, is that right? 43, uh, 43 or uh, 44. Something 40 like something years old. Yes, sir. And these young girls were eight and 12. Yes. How does a 43 year old, 44 year old man have sex with an eight and a 12 year old. So tell me what was going on and why did this happen? Well, when I, when I did all that drinking, my mind just went 
went crazy. My man. So you blame everything on the alcohol? Yeah, and my friend. Every time you had sex with these girls over a period of time, it was all alcohol related? No, it was me. It really was me. Now you've been in prison now for 20 years or so. You've taken yeah. some classes or you took sex offender class or you're in sex offender class now, aren't you? No. I, I, I did uh, two books in, in uh, mental, mental health. I did two books. Well, weren't you in sex offender class? Oh, yeah, one, yeah. Sure well, uh, how many phases did you go through in sex offender class? Me? Yeah. I'm sorry? He enrolled, he enrolled in August of 21, uh, Judge. So he's been in the program for about five months now. Okay. Do, do we know what phase he's in? He's still in phase one. Okay. Mr. Mitchell, uh, with all of the programs you've taken or whatever programs you've taken, whether it's been the, the sex offender training or any other programs that you've taken, uh, tell me what you learned about yourself and what went on with those two girls. I mean, how how can how can we be sure that won't happen again? So the reason it won't happen again is because I wasn't I wasn't really serving the Lord. I was, the devil had got into me, you know. That's the reason I did it. But now I'm a better person. I don't I don't think about doing those things anymore, and I'm and I'm. Uh, well, now, what did you think about doing back then? I mean, a minute ago, you told me it was the alcohol that made you do it. So what were you thinking having sex with an 8 and a 10-year-old, a 12-year-old? Well, it's, like I say, it, 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 it came about when I was, when I was drinking and wasn't, wasn't knowing what I was doing. Well, tell me that. what's tell me what's wrong about what you did. Well, what I did, I know it was wrong because I was. Well, tell me what's wrong about it. Why is it wrong? Because, because when I had this accident, June uh, tenth, nineteen sixty six, I was living in a uh, plain dealer, and I got hit on a bike. When I was 12 years old, and uh, it knocked me high as a house. And when I fell back, I fell back on my head, and uh, I broke my leg in two places. And it just, it just, just made me crazy because I, I fell on the back of my head. And when was that? June the 10th. What year? 1966. I was living in. And how old were you then? I was, I was a. Uh, 12 years old, but I, was, I got hit on the back. So. Now, now you're telling me because you had that accident and you fell and you hurt your head, this is what messed you up and made you rape your eight and 12 year old stepdaughters? Yeah, when I started drinking. Cause my head That's when you started drinking. Okay, I'm not so much worried about, well, I am worried about you drinking, but I'm not talking about your drinking. I'm talking about your having sex with an eight and 12 year old stepdaughter. What yeah. about that have you learned and how will you not do that again? Just like I said, I won't, I won't do it again. I, I just won't because like I said, when I got hit, I was just out of it. Then I was really messing with the wrong kind of people and stuff like drinking and stuff and I don't you know what do you think what do you think what you did to those two girls have done to them well it really they really they really, the way that I feel they really hate me and they they don't want nothing else to do with me do you understand why they might not want to have anything to do with you? Because I had sex with them. Because I had sex with them. That's what it was. 
What would you say to them if you had an opportunity to say something to them? I would, I would tell them that I would, would they forgive me for what I had did and I know it was wrong and I wouldn't want them to hate me and I wouldn't want them to hate them. I tell them that because I know it was wrong. How can I be sure you're not going to go back to drinking and you're not going to find yourself in the situation again and molest some other young woman? So like I said, I done, I done changed. I ain't like I used to be. I'm on the Lord's side now. And, and I just won't, won't do that no more. Tell me what you've learned so far or what has affected you the most from the sex offender class you're in. You're in a program now that's about sex offenders? Yeah. And, yeah. and someone talks to you, you listen to them, maybe some other people talk about sex offenses? Yeah, I do. I, Tell I, me I, how you feel about that program and how it's affected you. Well, it, 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 it affected me because what I did, I knew it was wrong and uh, it hurted me real bad. And just like I said, I just wasn't going to do it no more. Why did you do it then? I mean, I understand you hit your head, you were drinking, but you know, a lot of people are alcoholics and they drink, but they don't go rape people. They get in cars and kill people and they do stupid things, but they don't rape their stepchildren. Yes, I know. But just like I said, when I got got hit on my head, that, that mean I lost it. I mean, I just didn't, didn't have it. Okay. All right. Uh, what sort of substance abuse programs have you taken? You say you're an alcoholic and you drink all the time. What have you taken that will help you quit, prevent you from going back out and drinking again? Well, just like I say, I'm for God now. I don't want to be around no people that are doing that. I just Where are you going to be living at, Mr. Uh, Mitchell? With my uh, uh, cousin, you remember? Where? On uh, nine. What city? Three. So nine. What oh, city? Nine. Menden. In Menden, Menden, Louisiana. Yes, in Menden, Louisiana. Louisiana. Okay. Does do people drink in Menden, Louisiana? Do you go to crawfish balls? Do you go to barbecues where there's beer and everything? No. No, or you don't think so? You don't think your family has beer and barbecue and I'm, stuff like that? My family, and I live, my family, I'm the only one living in my family. Well, I understand that. You said you're just not going to drink. But in Louisiana, you're going to be around alcohol. How are you, what plan do you have to make sure you're not going to drink anymore? Well, just, just don't uh, go where they at, you know. And uh, doing what they doing, be to myself, because I ain't going to be, you know, like, well, I see him drinking, I'm going to get me a drink. That, that what, have you taken any substance abuse programs while you've been in prison? No. See, he's currently enrolled in Living in Balance. Oh, uh, Living in Balance. He started that program uh, a few months ago, I believe in September. So he is okay. participating in Living in Balance no. at this time. Warden, what else can you tell us about Mr. Mitchell? Uh, Robert, he's been here a couple of years now. Uh, this time he was here previously on the same charge back uh, earlier, <clears throat> but he transferred to another institution, but he's back here now. And, 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 and he, Robert has problems communicating. Uh, he, he's had uh, strokes and other, other medical conditions that uh, affect his ability to communicate and, and reason uh, reason out some of the questions you may have been asking him, but and he, uh, he's also being treated by our mental health department. He's, uh, he's been diagnosed with, with uh, uh, 
uh, major depressive disorder, and he's taking some some pretty strong medications for that, Risperdal and a couple other things, Your Honor. And then, uh, but but his conduct record's good, and he's he's putting forth the effort. He's talking about his faith-based programming that he's uh, actually been involved in uh, recently. And uh, you know, I think he's he's doing well at this institution. He hasn't gone through pre-release or or, or or many of our our re-entry programming. So uh, you know, he he might need to complete some additional programming and maybe review it again at a later date. But he's you know he's much older than he was at the time he committed this crime. He's 68, 69 years old now, and and uh, he, he's. He's not obviously not the same person he was in 1997. He's, he's aged and had a lot of medical issues since that time. Uh, but he is doing well at this institution. And, uh, you know, we might continue his current uh, uh, positive progress that he's been making over the last couple of years and, and maybe review him again at a later date it would be my right. recommendation. Okay. Thank you, Warden. I appreciate your comments. Mr. Yes, Chairman, sir. that's all the questions I have. I see there's no one to be speaking today, and uh, at this time, uh, Mr. Mitchell, anything you'd like to say to the board before we vote? Well, I like to say that uh, I really, you know, like he, he spoke about the, the, the two books that I, that I did. I really enjoyed doing that, and that, that, that helped me a lot, you know, because I had something to do right then. And then the, the lady asked me, did I want to do any more? But I told her I didn't because, you know, when I lost my mom, my sister, and my two brothers, that really, they really took the effect on me. I couldn't, I couldn't take it anymore. I couldn't, couldn't do nothing else. Robert's been focusing, Mr. Wise, he's been focusing on a lot of positive things over the last several months, last couple of years he's been here. He really has been focusing on, on positive things over this period of time. And, and I think he, he will continue that, that path, uh, no matter what the outcome, outcome of the uh, board's decision is. I think he'll continue doing what he's doing at this point. And this, this one more thing that I, I learned to do when I went to uh, Angola, I did this on my own. I quit smoking. I was, so when, I, when I first had this stoke, I thought that was from smoking, because I smoked cigarettes over 40 some years, but it wasn't cigarettes. It was, forgive me, this stroke was really a whole lot of grease. You know, I ate, cause I ate a uh, hamburger and it had a lot of grease in it and that's what gave me the stroke. So I said, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna use no like grease, salt, and a whole lot of pulp. I'm gonna stay away from that. That's that, 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 uh, yeah. Warden Good. Warden Good. When he's uh, but he's increased on a lot of stuff that he's done since he's been there with you, right? Yes, sir. he's been focusing on a lot of positive things. We do recognize his deficiencies in his uh, uh, medical condition and with the stroke that he's referring and his mental health issues, and and we, we know he's pretty. Uh, staff spent a lot of time working with him, but he is—he uh, is he has been involved in a lot of positive things over the last couple of years, and he's—he's he's doing real well. He's very cooperative with staff, very compliant with the rules. He had not had any disciplinary problems to, to speak of, and and we we're focusing on his medical and mental health issues, and trying to get him as, into as much programming as we can, uh, Mr. Wise. Yeah, you know his residence plans. Uh, I mean, the security where he's going to be staying, that's going to be, that be a big thing. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. All right. At this time, Mr. Bar Maribel will be voted. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mitchell, uh, uh, some excellent comments from the warden. Uh, you're doing well. You're working hard. And I'm, I'm very impressed to see that. Uh, you've got some issues that need to be dealt with. Uh, you've got some medical issues, you've got some mental health issues, and it sounds like you're trying to deal with those and they're working with you to deal with those. Uh, 
you're in sex offender treatment. That's very critical and very important. Uh, it may be difficult for you to be able to sit in a class and, and to take notes and to do all of those things. So I'm just going to suggest that you listen uh, and participate. You don't need to try to memorize things, but just listen and kind of to hear what they're talking about. Talk with other people about their issues in those programs. Substance abuse. You need to realize what you need to do when you get out of prison to be able to stay off of alcohol. Alcohol apparently has been a real serious issue with you. And as Mr. Wise has pointed out, we need to get a much better plan for you for your transition when you get out. It looks like you're really moving in a great direction. You're working hard. The warden says that you're in some excellent programs right now. There are a few other programs that you need to take, pre-release and re-entry and things like that. My vote today is going to be to deny you, but it's not because you're not trying. It's because you just need a little more things to do. So uh, that's my vote today. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. Ms. Jackson. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Ms. Mitchell. Um, I've listened to you and I've listened to the warden and I am glad that you're making progress. I am. I know it's a struggle for you. I know you need help with the classes, but I'm gonna encourage you to finish the classes that the warden talked about and to reapply once you finish those programs. But today my vote is to deny because I do think you need to finish your programs, all right? Yes, ma'am. All right, good luck to you. Yes, ma'am. You know, Mr. Mitchell, as I sit here today, I see you've done some good things, some positive things, and I, and I want to be on record today say I'm going to vote Grant for you, and you'll have that'll be two votes to one vote. I'm telling you about what the warden said today, I think it's going to be a real big help to you. And uh, he's going to see fit. You got one vote to grant and two to deny. So you work real, real hard, and you, and I believe you can overcome that. Okay? Yeah. The vote is to deny. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, I think that was the first time I saw Jim Wise do anything uh, like a nice from his perspective to, to towards an offender never really seen him share you know obviously he was given the positive vote to be nice to him uh the you know i'm glad mr mirabella had this interview he kind of just drives in there and says what we're thinking he's like getting hit on the head doesn't make you want to he uses the r word people i mean and that's what it was his little these little girls, girls that, that 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 he's supposed to be there to protect, was it seven and eleven years old? And we don't have the records on this. We don't have information uh, to go through. We probably just took a plea deal. Um, but thank you, Destiny, for for emailing and saying check this out. Richard already had it in the spreadsheet. I just I didn't you know get to it yet. So it's always helpful to have the email from you saying hey check this out. It's the it's scary. I you know he's he, uh, you call it what it is. The bottom line is he can't be. He should never be out. This is what he's doing at 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 it at an old age, really an older age, and his you know he's an, and to his little girls. Um, I just it's like how do you wrap your mind around that? You don't have the DA show up to speak on behalf of those little girls, which I, I, I'm so annoyed when they call them young women. And again, is that like a Louisiana thing? Can someone comment? We, we hear it too often. And I don't think they're talking about the woman as they are now women. I, I, I think they're using it as the time of the age that they were seven and 11 years old. They're not young ladies. They're not young women. They're little babies. They're little girls. And he, he has like no insight. He blames for what he did to them because of a bicycle accident. It just makes no sense. And
you know, at least he had a proper sentence. He has uh, his full term date is 2047. And at his age, he won't be getting out in 2047. He does have a good time date, 2040. And um, that's also, he's not, I don't think that's in 17 years. So there's a good chance that he, I mean, he'll, he'll, he might get out when he's, you know, no longer able to be a threat to anyone that's probably what's going to end up happening and they just want to be kind to him but i'm not quite sure you never know it's just it's how someone does that to little to, to the little little babies it's just um it's just it's just scary I don't know what else more I have to add. The I wish I had some type of, you know, they gave him a long sentence, but still I would have liked to have seen the DA show up. Yeah, Mr. Mirabella, they don't have beer in the crawfish bars. He's funny. But anyways, with that, I'll let you go.